Let's look at installing SAS on a PC. I'm here at sas-lang.com, the SAS website. And we can see here if we go to the install link, slash install, some documentation for how to do this. We'll look another time at the content on the left, how we can use some GUI that is graphical user interface applications to install SAS. But here we'll be doing it from the command line. And as the documentation suggests, we'll need to make sure we have Ruby, that is the scripting language, installed on our machine. Chances are on a PC, unless you've done some work with Ruby on Rails or some other Ruby-based application development, you probably don't have Ruby installed. So we'll have to do that first. And the easiest way to do that is to use the Ruby installer. It's a pre-packaged installation module. We could check to see if we have Ruby installed by going to the command line, that is start, run, type CMD. Then if we simply type ruby-v, you can see here that I have Ruby installed because I get a response from my command line query. I get the version. But again, chances are you don't have Ruby installed, so we'll need to go off and install it to the machine before we can install SAS and get to all the SAS goodness in the rest of the course. Now the way we'll do that again is through Ruby Installer, which is a nice, easy, single-click installation package that we'll download from here, rubyinstaller.org. I've already installed it on my machine, but we'll go through the steps so you can see how it works. Once we download the EXE, we can save it to our machine. I'd recommend the 1.9.3 version, not the most recent version, but certainly a stable version which will work fine for our use with SAS. So we can download that executable, that is an EXE file, and when we run it, it'll install Ruby on our machine. So here I've got the executable, I'll run it. I won't go through the entire process, but I'll show you enough of it so you can see. I'll choose English, I'll accept the license. You don't have to include the TCLTK support. Definitely check the add Ruby executables to your path. That'll help make sure you don't have to type the full path to the actual executable. And you can or cannot associate the .rb and .rbw files with this installation. Not gonna make much difference. And again, I won't go through the actual installation process because I've done it already. So you don't have to watch me go through it, but go ahead and do that on your machine. And then once you're done there, you can check and make sure that you have it installed by going back to the command line, typing ruby space dash v, and then making sure that you get, in this case, assuming you chose the 1.9.3 version, that response back from the terminal. Now with that done, we have Ruby installed, and we can go on to install SAS on our machine. And if you scroll down on this page, you can see it's as simple as gem install SAS. Gems are little modules, apps, little packets of functionality of Ruby goodness. And I can gem install SAS and then hit enter. And it'll go through the process of reaching out into the world to get the SAS gem, the most recent version. And you can see here I've already done it, so I'll switch over. You should, at that point, have installed SAS. And you can see that if I do SAS V, I can query to make sure that I indeed have a version of SAS. And it'll actually tell me, as of this recording, 3.3.4 as the most recent version. So now we've got SAS installed, and we're all set to move on to the rest of the course.